Hello world, this is Twani Price, host of Abroad Drinking Wine Podcast, where we discuss the ultimate life abroad, living like a local, launching my wine business in Cape Town, and helping locals start businesses. All this while drinking wine in a foreign country. Zuri Wine Tasting presents Wine and Dine Nights, featuring African-American winemakers, live music, and a four-course dinner prepared by Chef John Cleveland of Post and Beans. That's right, you grab the forks and we'll pop the corks. Join Zuri Wine Tasting for our Meet the Maker dinner party series featuring wines made by African-Americans. Zuri Wine Tasting is partnering with Post and Beans to create a delicious four-course dinner and wine pairing experience. The evening starts with live music and a sparkling wine reception. Each wine dinner is hosted by a unique winemaker of color. The food and the wine pairing are beautifully curated by Post and Beans chef John Cleveland and the owner of Zuri Wine Tasting, Twani Price. This is your chance to meet amazing winemakers and enjoy a delicious four-course meal. The experience includes dinner, wine pairing, and live music. Featured wine brands are Moreno Sparkling Wines, Flow Wines by Marcus Johnson, Charles Wine Company, Richaro Wines, and P. Harrell Wines. Get your ticket. We can't wait to see you. Alrighty, so it's Twenty Price, and I am here with Stephen Sterling, and we are tasting some wines. It's my first time trying this wine brand, and it's called, um, I'm going to... You might have to help me out. It's Jungle Love, and it's called... Jungle Love Vineyards, and it's a copy. A copy. Now, that's a unique African animal. There's only two zoos here in California that have it. One is in Sacramento, and one is in San Francisco. But it's unique. It's kind of like a half zebra, half antelope kind of animal. It's very unique, and these are unique wines. Nice. And so, like, I was reading the label, and they were saying that the copy, um, it has these unique stripes that, like, helps it, like, hide out in the jungle, and you can't really easily recognize it. And so that's why they decided to name their wines a copy. Yeah, that's, a, that's it in a nutshell. Nice. And so can you tell me a little bit about, like, the winemakers or the owners of the brand? Who are these people? Jungle Love. Jungle Love is the name of the wine brand, the winery. It's up in Napa? No, no region. Um, Dan and his wife are making some great wines up there. They really have a beautiful property and, you know, the dream area of Napa, really. It's a beautiful area, and they may have some great vineyards. Um, some of the wines that come from that area are iconic, and I think you'll see from tasting the wines that these wines don't disappoint. They're made at a world-class uh, facility. It's called Matera Wines um, there in the Okinaw region. It's a very new winery, and another day we'll go up there and, t- and see that facility. Uh, made by a family from Canada, and they're just, it's a state-of-the-art property, and the wines that they're making are, are reflective of the investments that's necessary in that area. Nice. And, I mean, it takes a lot to make a lot of really well not a lot but like to make quality wines in napa valley because this is like premier property premier grape growing premier winemaking so i would imagine that they're just investing a lot yeah everything i mean that's just like the price of admission frankly in that area you have to have you know everything is pretty much state of the art um trying to use the old world um soil conditions and temperature to grow some of the best possible, obviously in particular Cabernet Sauvignons and red blends that you can buy. They're definitely world-class wines. These wines, again, don't disappoint. Winning double gold at the Chronicle Competition, the largest competition of American wines in the world, uh, the San Diego Wine Competition. Um, they're just, they're just, they live up to all of their billings. And um, the investment is regla- reflected in what's in the glass. Wow, so you, in a nutshell, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. So I am here. I am in um, the Bay Area, and I'm tasting these wines with Stephen. So me and Stephen, we go way back. He's been a really big supporter of Zuri Wine Tasting ever since I started. And he had his own wine brand with his family, Estralina Wines. And he would come down to L.A. 
for his wines for my customers and they loved his wines and so now he's actually partnered with Jungle Love and he invited me to taste their wines and so I tasted the wines we tasted like five wines um we tasted a Sauvignon Blanc a Chardonnay um two Cabernet Sauvignons and then one red wine blend and I have to admit I'm I'm pretty impressed I'm pretty impressed with the wines they're very solid wines and the unique thing to me is that they're all from fruit from the Napa Valley so you know people don't necessarily characterize Napa Valley as um, multi-varietal for mm-hmm. one thing um, certainly the star of the show is Cabernet and Cab Blends and that's what people pay for when they come there but those, both of those whites are world class, a Bordeaux white with the Sauvignon Blanc. And then you've got that white Burgundy style Chardonnay. To me, that's probably the most surprising wine of the portfolio. Um, the, the other wines are, are, are really are reflective of the area and, again, the, the investment in the wines. Um, and particularly that 13 is really a, a super opulent Napa Cab, which if someone's going to spend... 150 or 200 dollars on an Napa Cab. That's the flavor profile that they absolutely expect. Yeah, the 2013. I definitely felt like it was Napa Napa ready and a great price point if you were in the market to spend like high dollar on wine. Just simply because you tasted it in 2013. What is it? 2019 now, so it's six years old, but the fruit was still intact. It was still bright. It was still bold. You can literally lay that down for the next five, six years, and I feel like it would taste pretty much the same. Maybe just like a little bit different, like maybe a little bit more complex, but that fruit was so bold, and it was compared to the 2012, right? The 2012 was great, but it was totally a different style. Like the 2012 it was more Bordeaux like to me. Yeah, the 2012 was more Bordeaux like, whereas the 13 was typical um, Napa opulent cab. It was just a really tremendous bold wine, and as you suggest, it will be a bold wine for the next, you know five to seven years for sure the the finish will you know be even more elegant and refined and that's something awesome to look forward to but every time you open a bottle of that wine your guests will not be disappointed yeah i really liked that 2000 i mean and it just depends on your style and i feel like it depends on your mood because i really liked the 2013 but then i also really liked the 2012 because they both just gave you different energies different flavor profiles and it's amazing how like fruit that comes from the same place but different years can taste totally different and that's the beauty of what mother nature gives you the difference is particularly when you have the same vineyard you have the same winemakers and you're trying to make wines in the same style what you taste in the glass oftentimes again depending on your winemaking style is the absolute difference between those vintages not winemaking style not ingredients the difference in what Mother Nature gives you in that vintage. And it really makes the 2013 vintage stand out, which I already knew it did. But when it's in the glass, you don't even need to say anything about it. Yeah, and you know what? I think that that's what you get from, like, small producers, right? Because small producers have that mentality. They have that control over, um, like... I feel like if you're a commercial winery, if you're a big winery, you want your vintages to taste the same every single year. Like Kendall Jackson, your Kendall Jackson, even the higher end is going to taste the same every single year because they have this formula, they have this recipe. But when you're a small producer, you get, for me, it's exciting to actually let the land do what it does. You know what I mean? And the vintage. And the vintage. The land and the vintage is an expression of land weather conditions, those harvest conditions, all of those things come into play. Um, I mean, honestly, you can even taste the differences from the weather conditions all the way through. And what in years that there's very little frost, um, that there's not late rains, say after Verasion in June or July, you can taste that through the vintage if you're really careful, again, depending on the blend and how you do it. And that's the beauty of artisanal wines. That's the, that's that's artistry and and really being able to taste the terroir the beauty with you know really great artisanal wines is you can actually taste the terroir and the differences 
between the microclimates and the micro appellations of great, great wine growing regions. I think that's so key, and people don't really understand that point. I think when they think about European wines, they think about different vintages and the way wines can taste differently. But when sometimes when they think about California wines, they miss that point just because a lot of times people aren't celebrating artisanal wines, boutique winemakers, you know, and they're not, I don't know, that's just my personal opinion, but we won't go into politics and all that stuff. Um, I enjoyed the white wines as well. The Sauvignon Blanc, I'm just going to be honest, it was a delicious Sauvignon Blanc, and I feel like it's made for a a lot of people, but it wasn't necessarily my style Sauvignon Blanc, because I definitely like, like, the more, um, herbaceous and like in your face acidic so right that's a younger vintage so that's a 2016 and i can understand where people like that racy acidity Mm -hmm. from a young vintage so obviously right now in 2019 you'd be wanting to taste a 2018 or 17 and again maybe more along the new zealand style of sauvignon blancs that have that racy acidity that you were alluding to Um, And that's, frankly, that's a different style than Bordeaux Sauvignon Blancs. It is. So, you know, they're they're more tropical, you know, warm weather fruit. You get a little bit more of that in Bordeaux, although, again, with the younger vintage, you're going to get that great balance with acidity. And this wine is, is, is the acidity is probably dropping off just a little bit. But to me, that's easier to use, uh, easier to drink. Uh, You know, I noticed that, frankly, you know, from a... Um, from a gender pre- pre- preference profile, uh, my experience is that women actually do tend to like the more racy acidities, whereas men tend to like something with a little bit of a roll off on that acidity and something that's easier, you know, more of a mid palate and it's a little bit easier to drink. That's my personal experience. Yeah, I mean, I felt like it was very easy to drink. It reminded me of a Viognier because um, it really had good fruit flavor, it had good structure. But it was just missing that racy acidity. Um, and then the Chardonnay. The Chardonnay I absolutely loved. Because I can be very picky with my Chardonnay. Like, sometimes Chardonnay, for me, is... It could be overdone, you know what I mean? It could have too much mallow. Or if it's stainless steel, it can just taste like a Pinot Grigio, a Chardonnay. But this Chardonnay was beautiful. It was elegant. It was complex. It paired very well with... Um, brie cheese and I liked it I mean I felt like even after I had it with the brie it just brought out more complex flavors and aromas yeah the the really like I've said before that Chardonnay was probably the biggest surprise in the portfolio again coming from Napa you expect that high malolactic fermentation Chardonnay the oaky thing that I personally don't really enjoy and moreover from away from my personal preference it goes away from a food-compatible wine, whereas a white burgundy, more traditional Chardonnay, is as much more food-friendly. You know, chefs and culinary experts really enjoy the, the white burgundy style much more because it's more flexible with various cheeses, various salad dressings, you know, things like that, mm-hmm. that part of a great, if you're not just looking at the wine, you're looking at a culinary experience, and you want your guests to enjoy a culinary experience, so you're the fun for you and, you know, providing a dinner party or whatnot is to provide food and, um, Her- you know, little small bites and cheeses and, you know, whatnot, charcuterie around a Chardonnay like that. No, and that's exactly what I was thinking when I drank the Chardonnay. I was just like, at first, I really liked it by itself. But then when I had it with the cheese, I was like, wow, wow. It's like really improving the wine and even improving the cheese flavor. So I felt like it was a great combination. And that's like that magic point when you have a great wine and you have food and then you're like, oh man, I love this. Like, I love them even more because you have both. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so that was, it definitely took me to the sweet spot. So let's see, we went through all the wines. Oh, we didn't talk about the red blend. And so the red blend, let me just refer to my notes about the red blend. Um, so it's been awesome. So I'm here and I'm in the Bay Area. I'm tasting with Stephen Sterling and we are tasting Jungle Love. Um, a copy. Did I say that right? A copy. Yes. A copy wines. And um, 
So we went through all the wines. One of the wines that we didn't talk too much about was the Dan Rouge. It was the red wine blend. And I really like that. I mean, in my notes, I say that it was um, it was big, it was bold, it was layered. There was a lot of dark fruit in it. Yeah, the layering, I think, again, is typical of what you would consider probably, um, you know, a, probably a, a great right bank Bordeaux. It's very Bordeaux-like in the various layers of flavor. You know, what Bordeaux is known for is their blending. And there's a perfect example of multi-layer, multi-layer big fruit wine blend. That's what that is. Right. And so, like, a lot of people who don't know right bank and left bank um, Bordeaux, right? So, Bordeaux is pretty much a, a red wine blend, right? But if you're talking about Bordeaux from the right bank, you're talking about Bordeaux that are Merlot-based. And then if you're talking about Bordeaux, Bordeaux from the left bank, those are going to be cab-based. And so, the ones from the right bank tend to be more, like, fruity and bolder. And so, that's what we're, that's kind of what he's comparing it to. Um, just for people who don't know necessarily know left bank and right bank for those. Um, but yeah, you described it perfectly. Um, so just lastly, where can people find more information about Jungle Love Wines? If they wanted to taste them, if they Strictly wanted to really buy on, them. on the website, um, you know, that's one of the availability is, that's one of the things that I think Dan and his wife really are going towards the exclusivity of the wine, um, you know, from starting from the price points. It's not a wine for everybody, but it's a wine for those that, as they say, love what they love. They love the big opulent wines. They know the flavor profile of traditional high-end Napa wines, um, regardless of the producer. Most people can remember um, a, a lot of times where they discovered, quote, their favorite, you know, Oak Knoll, or um, Oak, Oak, Oak Valley um, and certain regions of Napa wines, and they just aspired to those, and then those wineries yeah. and those brands became huge. They, they, they learned and yearned for the days of what it used to taste like. The Okapi wines taste like what small artisanal wines used to taste like from many people's favorite wine brands in the Napa, Napa Valley and... Um, Oakville regions of Napa. No, and I think that that's really important. That's a good point when people are drinking wines because, like, you know, I'm not, I am not above going to the grocery store on a Tuesday night and buying a $15 bottle of wine, right? And that's just a $15 bottle of wine that's going to get me through the night, right? But then there's wines that I have in my collection when I open them, and maybe I've paid a hundred dollars for these bottles, maybe a hundred and fifty. There's one. The most I've ever paid was three hundred dollars for a bottle of wine. But when you open up these wines that are a little bit more pricey and you drink them, they remind you of a sense of place. You know what I mean? You can I can imagine where I was in Napa when I tasted this wine, who I was talking to, who I was with. And that's the beauty of these artisanal wines is like they literally capture that sense of place in these wines and a moment in time yeah and a moment in time a moment in time and And that's and that's what i tasted in these wines when i tasted tonight especially well i don't i don't know especially the red wines but especially like the 2013 when i tasted it i was like oh my gosh this definitely reminds me of napa like when i tasted it i felt like i was in napa valley so that's absolutely that is definitely the beauty of it so you can go to their website it's the website junglelovewines.com or what's the website a copy wines a copy wines a copy wines.com and that's o-k-a-p-i wines.com you can Correct. order wines directly from their website they do like i went to their website and i checked them out and they actually do have tastings from time to time but literally, their winery is on the property that they live on. And so, like, if you go there for a tasting, it's a really exclusive experience. By appointment only. By appointment only. And you're literally in their backyard and you're tasting with the owners, which is something that we at Zuri Wine Tasting, we definitely love. That's definitely the experience that we aspire to. Um, so, yeah, it's by appointment only. Go to their website. You can also find them on Instagram 
on Facebook, all social media outlets, and it's A Copy Wines, O K A P I wines.com or just look them up on social media. Steven, Thank you. It's been amazing. I've been have such a great time. He cooked a wonderful meal. We had some wines and it's just been so amazing. Thank you so much for hosting me and I appreciate you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Alrighty, well cool. We are signing off and remember it's Jungle Love Wines, a copy wines. You can go to their website, you can find them on Facebook. And if you have any more questions, you can always just email me and hopefully we'll make it up there for a tasting for a Zuri Wine Tasting Experience. We'd love to have you. Yes, I am signing off. Um, you guys have a good one. Drink lots of really great wines. Check out these small producers, especially from one of my favorite regions. Napa Valley. Thank you.